Hello and welcome back to <clears throat> our first demo video dealing with chapter 13 analysis and interpreting the financial statements. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work on problem 13-5b uh, that's on page 681 and we're looking for changes in various ratios. So they give us uh, a bunch of information here right in our uh, uh, book they give us some sales cost of goods sold interest expense income tax expense net income give us some some cash flow information some capital expenditure information um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through and we're gonna calculate uh, one through nine which um, for which are the the nine ratios that we need to uh, calculate and then we're going to p compare them to 2015. So 2015, they already gave us the answers of what the gross pr gross profit ratio is. It's 40.4%. So we need to calculate that for 2016. Okay. So let's look at one. So the first thing I need to figure out is what is the gross profit percentage? Well, in order to figure that out, I need to take my gross profit I'm just going to abbreviate and say GP, gross profit, and divide it by my net sales. Okay. So what I need to do is pull the net sales amount and the gross profit amount. So when I look here, they really don't give me a gross profit, right? They give me enough to calculate it. So we're going to calculate gross profit. So we need to take our sales minus cost of goods sold. So our sales in this example is uh, $680,000 and the cost of goods sold are $407,700. want to put in my commas. Okay, so now I can figure out what my gross profit is. So sales minus cost of goods sold, 227,300. This is my gross profit. Okay, so to figure out what my gross profit percentage is, I'm going to take my sales, or I'm sorry, I'm going to take my gross profit, and I'm going to divide that by my cells. Now I get a zero. That's not right. Remember this is in, um, these are percentages, right? And I calculated these by getting rid of the decimal, or I, I'm sorry, I set up the spreadsheet to get rid of decimals, so I had to add a few. If I type in percentages, I see I get 40%, right? That is less than the gross profit percentage of 2015, which was 40.5%. 40, 40 okay, so the next thing I need to calculate, the problem tells us, is return on assets. Okay, so how do I calculate return on assets? Well, that's easy, right? I take my uh, net income and divide by my average. Uh, total assets. Okay, so I know just by looking at the problem that my net income is $26,000. Okay, the average total assets, they don't give me that information, right? They tell me what the total assets are in 2016, what they are in 2015. So I can calculate the average total assets, right? I'm going to say equals, open parentheses, beginning, asset balance, which was $350,000, plus ending balance, which is $460,000 of uh, total assets. And then I'm going to divide that by 2. I end up with four hundred five dollars or $405,000. So to figure out what my return on assets are, all I need to do is just divide my net income 
divided by my average total assets? Well, the answer is not zero. It is 6%. Now I can see that the return on assets in 2015 was 6.5%. So it looks like we're going down here. The next thing we need to examine, number three says return on sales. Okay, so that's easy. Return on sales is calculated as taking my net income and dividing that, oh, sorry, net sales, and dividing that by, or net income divided by net sales. Well, I know my net income is $26,000. I know that my net sales is $680,000. When I calculate my return on sales, I get 4%. Or actually, let's go out one decimal place. There we go. 3.8%. So let's look at number four. What does number four want? Number four wants us to calculate return on common stock equity. They tell us there's no preferred stock, so that's good. So to calculate return on common stock, all I need to do is figure out what is my net income. Well, I already know that. So I'm gonna take my net income and I'm gonna divide that by the by the average common stockholders equity. Okay. So I know what my net income is. Net income's 26,000, right? I need to figure out what is my average common stockholders equity. Well, they tell us in the problem that they give us stockholders equity at the end of 2015 and at the end of 2016. So in order for me to figure this out, I'm going to take my beginning plus my ending and divide by two. So I'm going to take $160,000 plus, or $165,000, sorry. I'm going to add to that my uh, preferred stock in 2016, which is $205,000. I'm going to divide by 2. And that is my average common stock. So to figure out what my return on uh, common stock is, I just take my net income, divide that by my average common stockholders' equity, and I get 14.1%. It's down a little from last year. Last year was 14.2%. Okay, the next thing we gotta figure out is what is our uh, AR turnover? So to figure that out, we take our net sales and we divide that by our uh, average accounts receivable. There we go. Okay, so we know what our net sales is. Net sales is 20, 26,000 bucks. I need to figure out what my average AR is. Well, that's easy to do. They tell us what our accounts receivable are um, as of December 5th or um, December 31st 2015 and <clears throat> December 31st 2016 we add those numbers up divide by 2 that gives us our average so to figure this out we're going to take the beginning balance which was $128,000 to that we're going to add our uh, ending AR balance of $182,000 
we're going to divide by 2, and we get our average receivables. So to figure out what our AR turnover is, we just divide net sales divided by average accounts receivable. And I picked the wrong number. Our net sales is 680,000. There we go. That's better. Okay. So be careful. Don't use, when you're calculating AR turnover, don't use net income, use net sales. Okay. We get our asset turnover. So the next thing they want us to use or to calculate is the average collection period. Well, that's easy. To figure out my average collection period, I take 365 days and I divide that by my, oh, let's do it this way, 365 days divided by the AR turnover. Okay? So we get 365 divided by my asset turnover of 4.387. When I divide these, I end up with 83.2. To 83.2 days. Okay, so the next thing we need to figure out is what is our inventory turnover. To calculate this, we take our cost of goods sold and we divide by our average inventory. Well, I already know what my cost of goods sold are, right? I calculate, I use that to calculate gross profit. So the uh, cost of goods sold is $407,700. I need to figure out what my average inventory is. Well, they give us the ending balance and the beginning balance for both 2015 and 2016. I have a beginning balance of 180,000 and I have a beginning or sorry, beginning balance of 180,000, ending balance of 225,000. Add them up, divide by 2. That's how you get your average. So I'm going to take 180,000. I'm going to add 225,000. Close parentheses, divide by 2. I get 202 point or $202,500. So what's my inventory turnover? Cost of goods sold divided by average inventory. I get 2.01. Now the next thing they want us to calculate is our times interest earned ratio. Okay, so to figure this out, we need to figure out what is the income before interest taxes and in, um, income before interest expense income tax expense divided by interest expense so what we're gonna do is we're gonna figure out what is our earnings before interest and taxes okay so in order for us to figure this out you might be tempted to say oh it's 27 or 272,300 dollars that would be wrong here's why they don't tell us what our operating expenses are. They tell us what our net income is. So to figure it out, 
just bear with me here. So we could take our sales cogs, that gives us our GP, gross profit. Then we would subtract out our ops expenses. Okay, that would give us earnings before interest and taxes. Then we would subtract out um, interest. Then we would subtract out taxes. That gets us to our net income. Okay, so we know what our net income is. Our net income is six thousand two hundred dollars. Right. We know what our taxes. I'm sorry. I apologize. Our net income is twenty six thousand. Right. We know that our income taxes are sixty two hundred. And we know that our interest expense is twenty thousand dollars. So if we add all these up. That's our earnings before interest and taxes. OK. So we're going to take that amount and we're going to divide by our interest expense. So to calculate times interest earned, you take your earnings before interest and taxes. And you divide by your interest expense. Okay, so we already know. So basically, what we were missing was our operating expenses. So that's why we couldn't start from the top and come all the way down. We had to start from net income, add back taxes, add back interest. That gives us our earnings before interest and taxes. Okay, so what we're going to do then is we're going to say, okay, I have all the information I need. My EBIT is 52.2. And I'm going to divide by my interest expense of $20,000. My times interest er earned is 2.61%. Now the last one I need is my operating cash flow to capital expenditures. Okay. So operating cash flow to cap expenditures. ratio super easy for us to do right why why is it easy well because guess what they give us cash flow from operating activities in 2016 it was um, 29.5 and this is cash flow from operating activities okay Next, we need to divide that by the annual capital expenditures. They should tell us what that is in the problem. And they do. Capital expenditures for 2016 were was $42,000. So to figure out my ratio, all I need to do is divide cash flow from operating activities divided by annual capital expenditures. I get 0.70. Okay. Um, so basically, we need to analyze this, right? And in analyzing this, I'm going to compare these numbers that we've calculated with the books, right? And we could see that the company showed a decline in all the profitability ratios that we computed, right? What are our profitability ratios? Gross profit percentage. Return on assets. Return on sales. Return on common stockholders equity right these are all profitability so you should know that
Okay. Then, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> then we calculated three ratios that have to deal with short-term liquidity, right? Those are those are my asset turnover ratio, my average collection period ratio, and my inventory turnover. These are all my, um, again, short-term liquidity ratios. And then finally, we had two long-term. Our two long-term are times interest earned and operating cash flow to capital expenditures ratios. Right? These right here are the long-term solvency ratios. Okay, so there you go. That's pretty much how you do problem 13-5B, okay? When we come back in our next video, we're gonna look at common size data and we're gonna see how we, we compare that or how we conduct the analysis as well as what, what inferences we can, we can make from there, okay? Uh, so tune back in for, for that one.